Hey, how's it going? This is McCoy Buck. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to rig this simple character with intermediate techniques and methods. The character on my screen is available for download. The link will be in the description. Or if you wanna follow along with your own character and apply the techniques and methods that I will be talking about, that works too. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to rearrange your bones for better rotation, even after already binding the bones to layers. Then I'm gonna go over bone or IK chains and how they work. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be using keyboard shortcuts they're gonna be displayed on the left-hand side of my screen, but I will still introduce you to the new tools and where they are located for those following along from the previous tutorial. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so where we last left off, we adjusted the bone strength and we bound our bones using the flexi binding method. Now what we wanna do is align our bones so that our bone rotation matches where the joints are. So let's go ahead and start with the leg. I wanna show you a keyboard shortcut to quick select a layer. And that same keyboard shortcut is this same tool right here. It's the layer selector. So if you see the layer panel right here, go ahead and select the layer selector tool and then click on a layer. And you can see wherever I have my mouse hovering and I click on that artwork, it's gonna auto select that layer. But rather than going to the tool panel every time, the keyboard shortcut for this is alt right click. So if you alt right click on a specific piece of your artwork, it's gonna highlight that layer in the layers panel. So starting with the leg, go ahead and alt right click that layer. Now you can see where that point is for that knee. So what we wanna do is we want to move the translation of these bones so that this rotation of this lower leg bone is right there in line with that knee. But when I go back to the main bone layer, you can see that I don't see those points anymore. So if I try to move those bones, I don't have those points to help show me where that knee is. So a setting that we need to turn on is our paths. So go ahead and select the leg front layer, right click it and select quick settings. In your quick settings under details, go ahead and check on paths and then go ahead and hit apply. Now, if you go back to your main bone layer, you can see that I now see those points. So before we align the child bone, we first need to make sure our parent bone is where it needs to be. Because if I hit T on the keyboard for my transform bone tool and I move the parent bone, it moves the child bone automatically because they're parented together. If I move just the child bone, you can see that the child bone moves by itself. And that's why we wanna start with the parent bone. So let's go ahead and let's test out the parent bone of this leg. Yours might be different compared to mine, so I wanna show you how you can adjust this. Let's hit Z on the keyboard to use our Manipulate Bones tool and go ahead and rotate that leg. Now I want this rotation to be somewhat flush with this pelvis there, so I want when the leg, it comes out into a split like this, I want it to be flush. So right where I have it is pretty good. However, if you have it further up, so when you go to rotate, maybe you have more of the pelvis sticking out down there, or let's say you have the bone way too far down on the leg, and so when you rotate it, it's the legs basically coming out of the pelvis. To fix that, you're gonna use the transform bone tool and you wanna select that top node of that top leg bone. And I'm gonna hold down shift to constrain that bone as I move it up and down so it keeps it perfectly aligned vertically. And then I'm gonna rotate it to test it. Okay, so I know that I need to move it up a little bit. Hit Z on my keyboard to use the manipulate bones and that looks pretty good. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna scale the end of this bone. So I actually want the end of this bone to be where the lower leg bone starts because of that rotation. Now, like I said before, it doesn't really matter where your bone ends, it's where it begins, but it does help to keep your bones lined up in uniform if you do have them close to one another. So to scale your bone back, if your bone needs to be scaled, you're gonna hold down shift and you're gonna select this bottom node here and it's gonna give you that double arrow. I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna drag that up. So I'm gonna drag the point of where that bone ends roughly around the same area of where those two points are. And drag it up just a little bit more. Now we're ready to line up our child bone. Now again, remember that the rotation happens at the tip of the bone. So use my transform bone tool. I'm gonna to select that top node, hold down shift and left click and drag up. And something that's cool is you can see that those bones, they actually snap. I think if you're using Moho 12 and newer, you're gonna have this snapping option and that allows your bones, once they're in proximity of one another, that tip of that bone is gonna snap to the end of the parent bone. 
But if you wanna control that manually, just hold down control and that'll prevent it from snapping into place. Now we're gonna be adding target bones to this leg. So we actually do want to drag out the scaling of this bone to the tip of that artwork. So go ahead and do the same thing like what we did at the parent bone and drag that out. Now to practice, go ahead and do the back leg yourself. But let's go ahead and let's turn on the paths for all the layers. So what you can do is you can left click to select a layer, hold down shift and select all the layers, and then right click, go to your quick settings and turn on paths, apply. And then I just click off to close that box. So now when I go back to the main bone layer, I have those paths now visible on that back leg. So go ahead and do the same thing like what we did with the front leg. All right, sweet. So once you've done that, your bones should now be aligned. So the joints will be aligned with those points. That'll give us a little bit better of a bend for our character. Now the next part that we're gonna do is the arms. So the same thing, focus on the parent first before you move the child because the parent and the child move together. So let's make sure that the parent is where we want it to be. So I'm gonna use my manipulate bones tool Z on the keyboard and I'm gonna rotate this front arm down. And as you can see, the shoulder pops out a little bit further than I'd like it to. So that means that my pivot point isn't quite positioned right. So I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard to go to my transform bone tool. And that's gonna snap back into place because I'm only using manipulate bones. And I'm going to hold down shift and I'm gonna drag that parent up just a little bit more. I'm gonna rotate that down and that looks pretty good. And then with that parent, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna scale it with that, that node there, hold down shift and left click and drag. Drag my child bone to where it needs to be to snap into place. And I'll just drag that bone to the end there as well. Now I wanna match up the front arm with the back arm. So I'm gonna use my manipulate bones tool, pull that down. And as I can see there, that pivot point is kind of off. So I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard. I'm gonna drag that parent bone for that back arm. And that looks a little bit better. I can go ahead and align this up the top here of my screen. Yeah, that needs to be pulled back just a little bit to line that up just a little bit better. Okay, and that looks pretty good there. So all I'm doing is I'm just using my transform bone tool and it takes trial and error. You're just moving that pivot point and then rotating it down to see, to see where that rotation is gonna happen. And for that scale, that looks pretty good right there. It's pretty well lined up with those points. So I'm just gonna drag the end of that bone out. And that's it. Now we pretty much have our bones aligned. Now, now the last thing that we're gonna work on to align is the torso bone. So like I said before, your torso might not be in the exact same position as mine is where you have this kind of nice rotation movement on the hips there. But now if we try to do what we just did before, and if you try to use your transform bone tool and move your bone around, you can see that it's also moving the arm bones and it's moving the head bone. And if you remember, if I hit P on the keyboard to bring up my reparent bone tool, it's because this torso bone is the parent of the arms and the head. So they're all going back to that torso bone. So whenever I move that parent, it's gonna move those children. And as you can probably guess, that's quite a bit of work now because it's basically undoing all the work I just did on the arms. So I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo. So now this brings us to the next important part to understand about your rig and that is the bone chain or the IK chains. So think of these bones like a chain and the arrows are the links. So for example, the lower arm is linked to the upper arm, which is linked to the torso, which is linked to the root bone. Now watch what happens when I break this link. So I'm gonna select this torso bone. So again, I have my reparent bone tool selected. So P on the keyboard. I have this bone currently selected. You can select it by holding down Alt, left click to select that bone. And now I'm gonna click off of the bone to unlink that chain or undo that parenting. But because we're talking about bone chains and I, I want you to understand what the bone chain is, I'm gonna be referring to these more as links and bone chains so it kind of sticks in your head a little bit better. So now if I want to rotate the torso, I hold down Z, for my manipulate bones tool and I go to rotate that torso bone, you can see now it's completely disconnected from the rest of the rig. And that's because if I go back to P, the reparent bone tool, that chain no longer exists. So there's nothing to tie down that torso bone. We had it previously tied down to the root, to the root bone, 
But without the chain, it just moves by itself. Now, something that you may have noticed is the arms still work and the head still works. And that's because the chain for those bones are still connected to the torso bone. But because the parent, which is the torso, is no longer connected to anything, that's why that moves all by itself, but these are still linked in place. So let's do something different. Let's parent the legs to the torso bone. So we're gonna link them to the torso bone rather than the root bone. Now when I go to rotate the torso with the manipulate bones tool, you can see it's moving the entire body. So basically, this torso bone is now becoming the root bone. All the bones, all the links of this chain is leading back to the torso bone. But if I want to rotate just that torso bone, you can see that I have the keyboard shortcut to rotate a single bone. I have to hold down Alt as I, as I left click and I drag. Now you can see that everything is rotating with that bone. Now, depending on how you wanna rig your character, you might want it this way. Because if we add target bones, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, the legs will be anchored to the ground. So if we go to move the torso, the legs are actually going to stay in place. But I did wanna create a simple rig, and I did wanna keep things simple. So in the end, we will have the leg bones targeted to the root bone but I wanna show one more example with how these chains work. So with these legs, I'm just gonna go ahead and unbind both of those. And now you can see as I move the child bone of that leg, because that IK chain is existent, there's a, there's a, a link from the child bone to the parent bone or the lower leg to the upper leg. But when I go to move the parent bone of that upper leg, you can see that it disconnects completely from the rest of the rig. There's nothing that's holding that chain or linking that leg to the rest of the rig. And actually I wanna do one more example. So let's say we have this upper leg linked to this upper leg. So I'm gonna go ahead and link that together. Now you can see my chain's going from the lower leg to the upper leg and back to the upper leg. So if I go to rotate this bone, because this parent is chained to the other leg, it's going to stay in place now when you rotate it. And when you rotate the lower bone, the IK chain is gonna be working with the inverse kinematics. But now when I go to select the back leg and I move that around, you can now see it's disconnecting both of the legs from the rest of the rig. And that's because the links of those leg bones end at the back upper leg bone. So hopefully that makes sense as to what function the root bone is providing when we create a root bone that can move all of the bones, but each bone themselves only moves the artwork that they're bound to. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bind this back to the root bone. So with that knowledge of how bone chains work, we now know that the torso bone moves the torso artwork. That's what we bound it to. The only reason why right now when we move the torso, it moves the arms and the head because the links of the bone chain are connected to the torso. So if I want to address the torso, I'm going to have to unlink the chains to that torso bone. So let's start with the arm. I'm gonna go ahead and select that top arm and I'm gonna click off. I'm gonna select the top arm on that side and click off and I'm gonna select the head and click off. So let's say your rig had that bone up a little bit higher. So when you go to rotate that bone, oh, and actually, you know what, uh, because I don't have this torso bone linked to the, to the root bone anymore. It's, it's moving by itself. It's becoming disconnected like the other bones that we showed. While I'm using the manipulate bones tool, I'm gonna hold down alt so I can better show the example here. But let's say that your torso bone doesn't have a very good rotation on it. Now you can go ahead and you can move that torso bone down wherever it needs to be to have that better rotation. So where I actually had it was, was good enough for me. But in your case, you might need to do some testing to move it into place where it needs to go. Okay, so now once we've done that, once everything is lined up where you want it to be, let's go ahead and let's link those chains back together. So I'm gonna link the arm bone to the torso, back arm to the torso, head to the torso. And then remember, because the root bone is the parent of all the bones and all the chains are leading back to the root bone, I'm gonna link the torso to the root bone. 
So now everything should be back exactly where it should be. But now this time you should have a good rotation on your torso and you should have a better rotation on your arms and on the legs. Now going back to the manipulate bones tool, when I go to rotate these arms, there's still going to be distortion. It's not gonna be perfect. And that's where we need to add smart bones. But I think I'm gonna leave it here for this tutorial. I think I wanna do smart bones in another one, as I know there's a lot more to explain for smart bones, and I don't wanna make this too overwhelming or give you too much information. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, let me know in the comments. Let me know what I could do better or what may have not been explained very clearly. I know this particular subject isn't very exciting, but it is foundational things for your rig that are really important to know so that you have a really good functional rig when it comes to animation. If you're new to the channel and you want more Moho tutorials, definitely subscribe. This is definitely what I love to do. And I'll do my best to have a video up every week. If you have any other future tutorial requests, let me know in the comments. I've gotten a lot of good feedback as far as tutorials that people want, and that's actually how I make my tutorials. So just know I'm definitely reading them and I'm adding them to my list of tutorials to make. But that's all for now, and I'll see you later.